हेलो व्यूअर्स लेट अस लर्न मोर अबाउट नर्वस सिस्टम नर्वस सिस्टम कैन बी स्टडीड एज सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम एंड पेरिफेरल नर्वस सिस्टम सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम व्हिच इज कंस्टिट्यूटेड बाय द ब्रेन एंड द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड पेरिफेरल नर्वस सिस्टम इज डिवाइडेड एज सोमैटिक नर्वस सिस्टम एंड ऑटोनोमिक नर्वस सिस्टम सोमैटिक नर्वस सिस्टम constitutes cranial nerves and spinal nerves autonomic ner nervous system constitutes sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system peripheral nervous system includes the nerves that emerge from and enter into the brain and spinal cord so the peripheral nervous system consists of two subdivisions these are somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system let us learn about somatic nervous system somatic nervous system consists of cranial nerves and spinal nerves cranial nerves arise from the brain that means mainly they arise from the brain stem whereas spinal nerves arise from the spinal cord so this is the spinal cord so the nerves which arise from the spinal cord that constitute the spinal nerves so what is the function of somatic nervous system it is involved in conscious activities and conveys information to voluntary muscles of the body voluntary muscles means the striated muscles of the body these are also called the skeletal muscles of the body and also it controls the reflex action what type of reflex action it is somatic reflex action that means it is called as somatic reflex arc differences between cranial nerves and spinal nerves cranial nerves arise from the brain whereas spinal nerves arise from spinal cord number there are 12 pairs of cranial nerves whereas there are 31 pairs of spinal nerves about the nature of the nerves the cranial nerves may be sensory in nature some of the cranial nerves are motor in nature some of the cranial nerves are also mixed nerves whereas all the spinal nerves are the mixed nerves so let's learn the names of the cranial nerves and the nature also the function of each cranial nerve what is the function of the cranial nerves so the cranial nerves send information between the brain and the sense organs and as you can see in the chart each nerve has a name that reflects its function and a number also according to its location in the brain like the first cranial nerve is known as olfactory nerve and its nature is sensory it is a sensory nerve and what is its function it is concerned with the function of smell second cranial nerve is the optic cranial nerve this is also sensory in nature and it is concerned with the sense of vision third cranial nerve is oculomotor in the name indicates it is a motor nerve and it is concerned with movement of the eyeball regulation of the size of the pupil it maintains the opening of the eyelid then fourth cranial nerve is trochlear nerve it is motor in nature 
and it innervates the superior oblique muscles of the eye so it is concerned with the eye movement remember it is the smallest cranial nerve fifth cranial nerve is trigeminal nerve it is a mixed type of nerve means it is composed of both sensory nerve and motor nerve it is concerned with sensation of the head face and chewing movement means it is responsible for sensation and motor function in the face and the mouth sixth cranial nerve is obduceans it is a motor nerve and it is responsible for the abduction of eye abduction means drawing the eye away from midline seventh cranial nerve is the facial nerve it is a mixed nerve it is responsible for the facial expression as it stimulates the muscles of the face also it is responsible for the secretion of saliva as it stimulates the salivary glands eighth cranial nerve is the auditory nerve it is sensory in nature and it is concerned with the sense of hearing ninth cranial nerve is glossopharyngeal nerve it is a mixed nerve as it is composed of both sensory nerve and motor nerve it is concerned with taste swallowing and secretion of saliva 10th cranial nerve is known as vagus it is the largest cranial nerve and it is a mixed nerve it controls muscles in the throat it regulates heart beat it controls the rate of respiration it stimulates the muscles in the digestive tract 11th cranial nerve is spinal accessory it is a motor nerve and it stimulates the muscles of the shoulder so help in shoulder movement 12th cranial nerve is known as hypoglossal nerve it is a motor nerve and it stimulates the nerves of the tongue so responsible for tongue movement spinal nerves the spinal nerves are related to the spinal cord so how these nerves are named is there are 31 pairs of spinal nerves so these spinal nerves are named according to the region of the spinal cord those nerves are present in the neck region they are called as cervical nerves and there are eight pairs region is neck thoracic nerves or thoracic spinal nerves are 12 pairs and they are present in the thorax thorax means it is the chest region lumbar nerves are five pairs in number and these are present in the abdomen abdomen means below the chest that means below the diaphragm sacral cranial nerves are five pairs and these are present in the hip region that is called as lower abdomen coccygeal nerves are of one pair and they are present in the tail region autonomic nervous system what is autonomic nervous system it consists of a pair of chains of nerves and ganglia remember nerves and ganglia on either side of the backbone backbone means it is the spinal cord so what are the nerves as we have discussed the nerves are nothing but the axons of a neuron and they are enclosed by a tubular sheath this is the nerve whereas what's the ganglia the ganglia consists of the sitons of the neurons ganglia is the plural form ganglion is the singular form what is the function of autonomic nervous system it controls 
the involuntary actions of the internal organs involuntary actions of the internal organs what are the internal organs those organs are inside the body mostly the smooth muscles those are not regulated according to our wish and also the glands so this is the autonomic nervous system it is composed of the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system autonomic nervous system can be studied as sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system let's see the differences between sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system sympathetic nervous system originates in the thoracic and lumbar region of the spinal cord it is known as thoraco lumbar outflow whereas parasympathetic nervous system originates in the cranial region of the brain and sacral region of the spinal cord so known as cranio sacral outflow so study this diagram sympathetic nervous system that is thoraco lumbar in the thoracic region and the lumbar region which is the thoracic region this is the thoracic region thoracic cord and this is the lumbar cord so the thoracic region and lumbar region is constituted by the sympathetic nervous system whereas parasympathetic nervous system it is called as cranio sacral cranio cranio means pertaining to the brain cranial region of the brain and sacral which is the sacral region this is the sacral cord so these two parts constitute the parasympathetic nervous system second point sympathetic nervous system prepares the body for action to either fight or run away quickly fight or run away quickly that means at the time of emergency whereas parasympathetic system prepares the body for relaxation it helps the body functions return to normal means after the emergency situation the body is brought back to normal which is carried out by the parasympathetic nervous system third point sympathetic nervous system prepares body for violent actions against abnormal conditions whereas parasympathetic nervous system reestablishes normal conditions after the violent act is over that means sympathetic nervous system is the active process it is carried out at the time of emergency whereas parasympathetic system that brings a calming effect that brings the body to a state of calmness fourth point as a part of a response the heart rate increases rate of breathing increases pupils get dilated these are the effects due to sympathetic nervous system whereas as a part of the response it decreases the heart rate controls breathing pupils get constricted all these calming effects are carried out by the parasympathetic nervous system antagonistic action of sympathetic and parasympathetic system antagonistic action means the actions which are opposite to each other means whatever functions are carried out carried out by the sympathetic system the opposite function is carried out by the parasympathetic system like sympathetic system prepares the body for action parasympathetic system prepares the body for relaxation we can take a few examples like dilation of the pupil constriction of the pupil we can find all the functions of sympathetic on one side and all the functions of parasympathetic on the other side salivation decreases salivation increases heart rate increases then heart rate decreases bronchi dilate and bronchi constrict gastric and pancreatic activity inhibited gastric and pancreatic activity stimulated glycogen converted into glucose in the liver whereas glucose converted into glycogen in liver release of adrenaline hormone and noradrenaline hormone whereas these are inhibited peristalsis is inhibited and peristalsis is stimulated bladder relaxes by sympathetic system Bra bladder is constricted by parasympathetic system study the table sympathetic nervous system is stimulated by the hormone adrenaline this hormone adrenaline which is known as 
emergency hormone it is secreted from the adrenal medulla it is secreted from the adrenal gland so the medulla part of adrenal gland secretes the hormone adrenaline so how the body organs are affected by the sympathetic system and parasympathetic system that means the body organs act when they are stimulated by the sympathetic system at the time of need and the body function is restored by the parasympathetic system like heart acceleration of heartbeat is carried out by sympathetic system whereas retardation of heartbeat is carried out by parasympathetic system like blood vessels are dilated here and are constricted by the parasympathetic system lungs so dilates bronchi and bronchioles whereas constricts bronchi and bronchioles intestines peristalsis is decreased by sympathetic system peristalsis is increased by parasympathetic system urinary bladder the sphincter muscle the sphincter that is called as urinary sphincter it contracts the muscles relaxed sphincter relaxation muscle contraction so filling to urinate pupil of the eye dilation is carried out by sympathetic system constriction is carried out by parasympathetic system salivary glands these are inhibited so secretion of saliva is inhibited so mouth becomes dry stimulates secretion of saliva so more salivation occurs lacrimal glands known as the tear glands they stimulates secretion of tear then parasympathetic system inhibits secretion of tear erector muscles of the skin they stimulates contraction so the hair is raised whereas relaxation of the erector muscle is carried out by the parasympathetic system where the hair becomes flattened body as a whole prepares body for action prepares body for relaxation so here we have learned how the sympathetic system and parasympathetic system they act opposite to each other thank you